thank you very much for joining today i'll speak today about journaling for inner growth and as the title was the art of spiritual journaling so there we'll discuss about uh, how it can help us in in inner growth also so a quick as a quick introduction of myself with respect to journaling since my childhood i loved to write or more than that i would say i loved words I, one of my hobbies in childhood was just picking up a dictionary and memorizing words understanding the various shades of words and how they relate with each other and how they can be used in different contexts and i started i was used to write essays and other things i dreamt of being a writer and i started publishing articles in magazines and newspapers as i grew up uh, however the idea of writing for oneself or writing for inner growth that was something which i had discovered quite late in my life and i feel that that is that is one of the regrets of my life because it's a very powerful tool so now i journal almost every day if i don't journal on particular days i try to journal more on the next days whenever i can and i find that it grounds me it realigns among the many benefits i'll talk about the various benefits also but it basically it realigns who i am with who i want to be so let's look at journaling so i'll talk about these three things how journaling works and how a spiritual framework empowers us in journaling and then i'll talk about specifics about what to journal about whom to address the journal to and a few specifics like that so currently i'm planning to do a eventually do a book on the topic of the yoga of writing how writing can help us in inner growth and that's about inner journaling so about journaling for uh, inner growth so now broadly speaking writing can have various purposes and we all write but all of us may not be authors so here if you can look at this say somebody might write formally for publication that means they may write books or articles then somebody might write for communication we have we all write emails and letters sometimes during for functional purposes during discussion we make when we make notes and then therefore introspection we might journal so most people when they think of writing we usually have this top category in mind that a publication oh i have to write to publish something maybe formally as a book which is fine but apart from that we all write in fact as Uh, there was a fear with the advent of with the advent of phone technology and especially video video calling and phone calling that writing would become obsolete however with text messaging more and more of us are writing mm. and people keep keep ty- keep typing keep typing so writing has seen a resurgence although of course some people critique that Uh, writing online or writing in messages is not really writing because there is often a lot of informal usage of words and is often pr- gr- rules of grammar or rules of uh, writing are not followed but ultimately writing is meant for mm. conveying a message whether it is through a book or whether it is through a text chat as long as messages are being conveyed and that's fine so although many of us may not consider ourselves as writers in the formal sense of the word in the top category of publication but we all write we we all write emails in fact all the physical letters many of us may not have written for a long time but we all write emails so we all write of message on facebook so we are all writing and then there is of course if we are wanting to do a discussion we may it's a serious discussion we might make a some notes of what the other person is saying the notes of what we want to speak and this this is more of a tool for not just communication but recording the communication so i would say most of us do the communication always constantly discussion we might do occasionally 
publication we may some of us may aspire to do it some of us may have done it to some degree mm. but <clears throat> there is this one introspection for uh, journaling so now let me put this in terms of audience once again if we start from introspection so here you are writing for yourself mm. in the writing purpose uh, in this in the second one we are writing so that we can communicate Mm -hmm. this is more of a tool for understanding and communicating so generally what is the notes prepared for discussion we might not share that with others people may not understand it so writing for one writing for oneself writing for communicating with others writing uh, writing for communicating with others here that discussion then writing as a form of communicating with others so that two different things writing as a preparation for communicating for talking or whatever or for understanding what others are talking then writing for talking with others and writing for talking with a broad mass of audience so if you start from introspection and go counter clockwise you'll see that the audience is increasing more and more for each of these so today we will focus on the left leftmost that is writing for introspection now the word introspection literally mean intro in intra is a variation of intra which is inner so we have international and intranational international is not that common a word but it means within a nation we just usually we use the word national for it so intergroup intergroup dynamics and intra group dynamics it means within so intra refers to within now spection comes from the word spec so spec has spectac spectacular spectacular means that's which is worth seeing glasses are in some parts of the world called as spectacles those which help us to see so introspection means inner seeing so looking within ourselves and journaling can be done for looking within ourselves to understand ourselves better so now with respect to these four kinds of audiences we discuss writing can be analyzed into two different aspects of it there is the art of writing and there is the craft of writing so we could say compare writing with carpentry now if somebody wants to make a artistic uh, say wooden cabinet then initially they have to have some basic knowledge of the craft of writing okay if i wanted to hold this much weight then i have to make sure that the the supports the feet of the cabinet are this this thick this strong if i want it to hold this much uh, this kind of stuff to be kept on it i have to make sure that this is made of this material or not that material so craft refers to the mechanics of what needs to be done so that things work now art refers to we might have a particular kind of finish we might have a particular kind of design to the whole thing so we could say in some senses the craft is more important than the art if we make a very artistic cabinet or we make a artistic chair or artistic table but as soon as you put something on it it collapses well that's not so much of use so even in works of art craft is required similar in writing craft refers to there has to be some basic knowledge of grammar of punctuation of sentence construction and then we can use a writing as a art if somebody doesn't know the grammar at all and then they say the, this is the way i write this is my style well that may not be very helpful in communicating with others so here why why am i talking about this based on the kind of audience we are addressing the craft aspect of writing may become more important than the art so if if we are reading an email from someone then within the email we may not be really concerned about the artistic aspect but a craft way aspect what is this person saying i want to understand it that much at least now with respect so, so more, some of us as soon as we start thinking of writing we may start thinking about oh the rules of grammar on all this it might seem too much of a burden for us but so as i said craft centers on grammar rules art centers on self expression and in general if you are writing for others craft is as essential if not more than art 
so we need to learn various rules of language for clear communication but when we are writing for oneself when we are writing for journaling we don't have to worry much about grammar craft is not that important our purpose is self expression and self expression for self awareness to understand ourselves better to get more in touch with ourselves so here um, as long as we can understand what we are writing or even if we don't we ourselves maybe after a few months don't understand what we have written doesn't matter even then we wrote something that will help us at that time and so sometimes we may write something formally also and maybe a few months or few years later we may not be able to understand it so at least at that time self expression for self awareness i'll explain how this works how self expression can help in self awareness normally we may think that once i have self awareness then i can express myself isn't it okay if somebody says uh, what are you feeling right now how are you feeling right now if some we are thinking of whether to continue in a particular relationship or put it pop put it in a pause or to end it so how are you feeling about this right now we might say i don't know how i am feeling that's why i can't decide if i knew how i was feeling i would be able to decide so we might think that self awareness has to come before and then self expression can be there well not necessarily why not because words serve two purposes usually we think of words as tools for expressing our thoughts and this is the we could say the outward function of words i have some idea and then i am looking for the right word to speak it so you know say two of us we meet some person and then we have interesting interaction with that person and then we want to talk with some other, uh, some of other friends you know i met that person how uh, okay the other friends ask us, how was that person we, we start thinking yeah it was interesting now interesting is not a very informative word it can be a stand in for many things so it's interesting because of what then we are thinking and then i a friend you know they were all they were audacious oh yeah and that's the right word okay so now what happens is here we have some thought we want to express our thought and then if we get the right word that's so good so vocabulary can help us sometimes to express our thoughts better and this is a normal function we think of for words and sometimes if somebody is articulate then we feel that they just they just speak the words which we wanted to but we were not able to in many people um <clears throat> they may go to some psychologist or some mental health care provider not because they have like serious mental health problems but they may just need someone to hear them and several of my friends are psychologists and this is one of the fundamental attribute that they need to cultivate is like a non judgmental acknowledgement okay just let the person speak let them the other person articulate themselves and we help them to articulate so what happens there is that as that person is speaking they're discovering their thoughts okay this is what i'm thinking sometimes a person may try out one word oh this doesn't work and try out another word that's one way but this is much deeper let's look at this a little bit more so words can some so dual use of word is sometimes we seek words for our thoughts that means i already have a thought and i seek words for it i am feeling angry no i'm feeling annoyed no i'm feeling perplexed i am feeling irritated i am feeling infuriated no i am feeling indignant right now. yeah that's right indignant you know i feel not just angry but i feel this is extremely unfair the way this person has behaved and that's i'm feeling indignant oh that's the precise word so we seek words for our thoughts sometimes however we seek our thoughts through our words that means words are not just say in the first vision words are like we could say pipes pipes by which we have some thought inside we put that thought in a word and we it becomes like a capsule 
or a pipe through which it becomes a conveyor of meaning. So the meaning is there, some thought is there within us, it convey, it is expressed outside. But in the second case, words become like flashlights. So we seek our thoughts through our words. So each word is like a flashlight. And when we put that flashlight in words, if, if that word corresponds with the flashlight, or if that word, there's a flashlight, imagine it's a flashlight, that if the flashlight shows us something interesting, it just shines forth. If the flashlight doesn't show us something interesting, you know, you may have something like a metal detector. When a metal detector, it detects a metal, then immediately it rings. So we could say, we could say this is something like a, like a detector inside. So we, we seek our thoughts through our words. So we are using a particular word. If that is accurate, then it resonates with us. If it is not accurate, it doesn't resonate. So this is how words can help us to understand ourselves. So word is not, words are not only for helping others understand us. They are also meant to help us understand ourselves. And that's why words can even heal us. So that is, how do the words heal us? They, there is a whole form of writing called journal therapy, which helps people use journaling as a tool for overcoming addictions, overcoming unhealthy behaviors of any kind. So we could say that there is a healthy part within us and an unhealthy part within us. And I'll come to that when we discuss about the spiritual insights that can inform journaling. But the idea is, Words can act as wisdom capsules that the healthy part within us gives to the unhealthy part within us. We all can sense a part which is impulsive, which is rash. You know, there, is a, there is something within us, if we just keep acting on it, it can ruin our life. A part of within us may say that, just yell at that person. and Vent out everything that you're feeling. Now, we can't always vent out everything that we feel. That can be destructive, not only for the other person's emotions, but it can be, it can be destructive for us also because sometimes our feelings don't reflect who we are. Sometimes the feelings reflect who we are. So there is an unhealthy part which is impulsive, and there is a healthy part which which analyzes, which is calm, which calms us. So words can become like wisdom capsules that the healthy part of us gives to the unhealthy part within us. Now what I would like to do is we will do a journal sampling mm -hmm. and we will we will have about five to seven minutes if you need a little more we can have it but we can keep it as seven minutes and uh, there'll basically uh, four tasks within this journaling and even if you can do one of these also that's enough but now journaling can be in various ways it can be done i'm i'm doing this as a as a simple form of journaling, which requires no preparation for anyone and which can help all of us. So this is journaling in terms of time. So if we look back at our life, mm -hmm. so we look back at our life, say so look back at 20, last 24 hours in your life and think of some good thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And among the good things that happened, look for the best thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And then look for some bad things that happened. And among those bad things, look for the worst thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And then note what and why. So uh, why was this so bad? Okay, this was such a good thing. happened. Now, why was it so good? So now what happens by this is, we understand ourselves better. All of us have our own, our own subjective, we could say systems of valuation. And some things, say if a passerby insults us, uses some bad word for us, we might not feel hurt by it. But if somebody very close to us, they speak some bad words to us, we, that might hurt us terribly. So this is our our own system of evaluation where you know, the people close to us may hurt us more. So if somebody has spoken something that has hurt us, why is that? Maybe it is because they are very close to us and their opinion matters to us. Maybe it is because what did the subject they are speaking about is very important for us. It's a very important part of our identity. Or maybe the particular word that they used, 
Now that reminds us of some somebody else who used similar harsh words against us, and so it's not specifically about who this that person, but something about uh, our inner wounds. So it's not just what, but what and why. So in general, if you're looking at life, the certain things happen to us and certain things we do. So here we are talking about the things that happen. So something good that something good that happened, something bad that happened. Now when I say the best. it may be very if some some of some of some of you find that actually deciding what is the best is very difficult or deciding what is the worst is very difficult sometimes we have such terrible days that so many things go wrong okay then just choose one which comes to your mind strikes your mind the most and choose that but there is one more thing in our life as i said events happen to us and we also do actions so there's another aspect to journaling here in the same exercise that is the good things that we did and the bad things that we did so look at the last 24 hours and think of the best thing that you did okay you know that was a very difficult interaction but i think i acquitted myself well over there i didn't all that person tried to provoke me i didn't get provoked something like that good thing that you did or some bad thing that we did now among the bad things if you can determine what is the worst thing that you did you can note it down and also don't when you note it down what is the worst thing don't just use it don't just use a label hmm oh why did i do that because i'm because i'm insensitive because i'm irresponsible now try to go deeper and look at what was the situation that made you do that we don't want to use journaling simply to confirm the labels that we have assigned to ourselves or the labels that the world has assigned to us oh i, I what is the worst thing that i did i overslept and why did i overslept because i was so lazy well that's not a very helpful thing i overslept because maybe i turned off the alarm or when i the alarm didn't work or i was actually tired or maybe i didn't keep the alarm close i i could have kept the alarm close a little further away whatever so don't use this to just confirm your labels try to go beyond the labels to understand yourself better so i'll repeat and then our time will start that we are going to journal about the last 24 hours to look for four things the best thing that happened the best the worst thing that happened the best thing that you did and the worst thing that you did and if you can we'll have around 7 to 8 minutes so you have 2 2 minutes for each of these and after that whichever part you would like feel like to share you can share from within that and even if you don't share this is for yourself and don't just note what but also note why and don't worry too much about getting the best just best or the worst whatever comes to your mind in that category that's good enough okay so your time starts now thank you oh is there a comment or a question yeah okay sure thank yeah, you for joining really is the um is the first part the best and the worst thing that happened to you that is that within 24 hours as well well 24 hours is a reference you know we could go back to 10 years or 15 years also but if you if you feel if you would like to go back a little both are within the last 24 hours so this is oh. basically like a daily journal this is a tool which you could use for daily journaling but if you would like to write something about uh, which happened one week ago that's also fine but here the idea was we could have some ready framework for doing daily journaling if you wanted to so thank you very much um so i think uh, whatever you have done now is good you may want to continue this afterward if you like so i would like some of you to share three things first is how did you find this aspect of journaling or journaling in this way what are your thoughts about what you just did second is if there is something in what you journal that you would like to share and third is if this doing this exercise after what you heard if it raised any questions that you want to that you would feel need to be addressed so what was your experience your emotions your thoughts about what you did then the content of what you did and then any clarifications so would you like to speak something i really found this exercise to be um extremely useful I am the I am the type of person who doesn't write. Like writing's always been kind of like one of the most difficult things for me. 
Um, I'm like a straight A student, like hardcore, but like for some reason, English and writing has always been hard. I think my throat chakra and my expression's always been a little bit blocked. Um, so I, you can't even, nobody probably can even read this, but what I found very interesting about the exercise is that what I experienced the worst of me, what, what has, what, sorry, um, is what caused me to do the worst, like not caused oh, me, but oh, it was like the okay. source of what my reaction was the worst, you know, okay. it's, it's what caused that. And so I thought that was like, really, like, I didn't even really think about it when I was writing it. It wasn't until after I kind of looked back and realized that the reason I did the worst thing was because I was hurting immensely from what I had experienced, which was the worst thing. Um, and then on the other side, like my best thing that ever happened to me, to me is actually what caused me to do the best thing that I've ever done. <laughs> that, so that I have yeah. immense joy from my first experience that it led me to make a change in my life that I think was the best for me and my family. And mm. so for me, this exercise has showed me where I've come from, what kind of life it was causing me, how this epiphany of joy changed me to be able to change myself into now, instead of living in this bad life that I feel like I've been transitioning to this happy place of abundance and the growth. That's beautiful. Um, and That's so very, I don't, sorry, yeah. I don't think no, the very good. things are very good realization. Important. Yeah, very yeah. good observation. Yeah, please complete what you're saying. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't think that the necessarily the events themselves, you know, um, yeah. I think we all have traumatic stories that they matter so much. I just think it's more of the process of being able to realize what caused you so much pain, being able to come to terms with those emotions, being able to realize that's what's causing you to act out and to be, you know, to live in a negative space. And to see that there's so much more beauty and joy in this life. And all you do have to do is make a choice, a different choice. And it could be, you know, that light could be yours because we are necessarily, that's what we are. We are a part of that light. So that, that was mine. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you very much for sharing that. You know, I just make one quick point about what you said that when I started journaling, usually it was many years ago, I would find that these two would correlate almost every time. The worst thing that happened would lead to the worst action on my day. And similarly, the best thing that happened would lead to the best action of the day. Then over a period of time, I, I don't know whether it was conscious or subconscious, I started separating them. That okay, this was the bad thing that happened. And then my reaction was also bad to that or not as good as it, I would like to be. But then I started analyzing more of those events which were triggered by outer situations and those which were triggered simply by my inner impressions without outer situations. So I think uh, apart from the specific correlation that you got, which is very, which is very insightful, I feel that over a period of time, we understand ourselves better in terms of to which kind of situations we are more vulnerable externally, which kind of situations we become more vulnerable internally, and then we can equip ourselves to deal with it. So thank you for sharing this. Great. Anyone else? I can I can also share something people if you like. Yes, please, Harisham. Um, I was thinking this is a little. <laughs> I uh, hope it's not too personal, but I was taken back to a time when I was 14 years old as I was writing um, in terms of one of the worst things that I did. And my parents had recently been separated and I was in boarding school in India, this really kind of harsh boarding school. And a lot of my friends came from very wealthy backgrounds. Anyways, I was really, it was really probably the darkest period of my life. And uh, I just got, you know how in India you can acquire alcohol quite easily, even as a minor, right? And so I, because I was going through such a dark phase of my life, I, I just, my best friend and I, he, he was like, you know, we should drink together. I'd never drank in my whole life. And uh, he had a little bit more experience. So anyways, we got super drunk. And to the point where I wrote a very angry letter to my father. <laughs> and it was, 
a very, very angry and sort of like anger filled letter as a drunk 14 year old who was going through like, you know, a very dark phase in his life, upset because his parents were getting separated and I couldn't do anything about it. Um, and then I, I was thinking about that. The best thing I ever did or the happiest thing I ever did, which was really to take up the path of spirituality and start studying Bhagavad Gita and Eastern philosophy. And I was trying to find a correlation between the two. And the thought that came to my mind was I felt that the darkness I experienced as a 14 year old, the, 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 the level to which my, myself, my young self would enter into such a dark and negative space. It scared me a little bit. And I felt like my move towards spirituality was really my desperate desire to remove such darkness from my being and, and to move into the light. You know, um, when I was 19, I actually got that phrase tattooed on my, on my body that I will seek light through darkness. And I really feel like I saw how low my mind and my character could go in terms of hate and anger and frustration when my parents were separated. And my move towards spirituality was really a desire now when I look back to kind of never want to experience that kind of lowness again and really grow beyond it. And I felt like spirituality had the best answer, the yoga tradition, meditation. So this exercise really helped me kind of see how the best thing I ever did was actually directly inspired by probably the darkest point in my life. It's beautiful. Yes. Actually, this can help us get a long-term perspective also. So I talked about journaling as a, this can be used for journaling on a daily basis, but this could also be used for journaling at a, as a, a broad look at our life and then to discover patterns in our, if the events and our choices, that's very helpful. So thank you, Harisham, for say, sharing that. Yes. Thank you. Anyone me. else? Um, I'd like to share. Yes, please. Um, I really enjoyed the exercise. I think something that stood out to me, oh, I'm Rachel, by the way, I don't think I've introduced myself. Um, I think something that stood out to me was like, since we're writing about something kind of like bad or negative and then something good, I realized that like, it felt really good actually to write about something negative because I feel like, I don't know, like I kind of do this, I did this thing for a while where I was like, I'm not going to write anything negative. Like I only want to focus on the positive things. And I think like, there's just like a lot of stuff on social media, like, you know, like people talking about like focusing on positivity and like manifestation and like all of these things um, that uh, sometimes it's, I feel like difficult. Like I shouldn't be focusing on the negative, but I realize like kind of doing the, the exercise that, like writing about that negative experience kind of like released it. Um, so like that was the most powerful thing for me. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, sharing that. <laughs> uh, currently, as was mentioned that I write on the write every day on the Bhagavad Gita. So currently I'm exploring a topic called the power of negative thinking. Usually we talk about the power of positive thinking, but why negative thinking? Because in some ways, the, the three broad possibilities, sometimes there are negative possibilities that we need to prepare for. Hmm? Something Say, if at any time <clears throat> we were saved because of uh, there's a fire and there was a fire extinguisher that saved us, then that, that somebody thought negative, okay, a fire might occur over there. That's why they put the fire extinguisher there. So thinking about negative possibilities helps us to prepare for things. Sometimes there are negative realities in life and we need to come to terms with them. Mm -hmm. We need to gain some acceptance of what has happened. And that, so the problem is not considering negative possibilities or analyzing negative or, ex or contemplating negative realities. It is a negative mentality where one is controlled by that. That mm -hmm. means one can't stop thinking about it even when one wants to, one needs to and wants to. So, okay, a fire may occur. So let me keep a fire extinguisher here. That's, that's channeling the power of negative thinking. But if I keep thinking, what if a fire occurs? What if a fire occurs? What if a fire occurs? And that's all I think about. That's when it becomes destructive. So not all negative thinking is destructive. And especially with respect to the events that happen to for us, see, even negative emotions are integral to emotional health. How is that? It's just like physically, 
pain is integral to physical health now we don't want pain of course nobody wants pain in general but pain indicates two three things one thing is indicate indicates that maybe something unhealthy or unsafe is happening to us if we start feeling a something you are sitting on a chair and something starts piercing your body maybe is there a insect there is there a nail there so pain indicates something unhealthy happening and there are diseases where people don't feel pain and that's extremely dangerous situation because the painful stimuli is still coming to them but their body has become desensitized to the pain they get damaged but they don't realize that they are feeling that pain that that something damaging is happening to them so so negative emotions could also so negative emotions are something similar okay that means this particular situation when i felt bad about it that means this may not be healthy for me so it indicates something unsafe or something unhealthy now of course that's not the only situation say if we are doing a workout at that time we feel some pain now that pain may not be unhealthy that pain may be something which we need to work through so that we can become fitter so of course not to excessive degree but to some degree so the point is that just as we uh, we we don't have to be paranoid about physical pain physical pain can be a messenger okay don't do this or physical pain can be okay you're doing this but don't stretch yourself too much in doing this similarly we could say emotional pain or negative emotions can also be a messenger so in that sense uh, we can learn from the negative emotions also without necessarily being like a uh, somebody who's a masochistic who goes out and seeks pain but we don't seek it we don't run away from it also so thank you for sharing that does it make sense what i said yes thank you <laughs> oh yeah thank you so sway has made a comment over here pain lets us know we are alive <laughs> yeah that's yeah. so very <laughs> that's true <laughs> thank you Okay, and I, and I think it makes us aware too right because sometimes you're not even aware that something is happening within you um but then the pain makes you aware to kind of like take action sometimes that's true very true we could be some bit nihilistic about thing nothing matters we say but pain ultimately matters you know we cannot just rationalize away our pain and it forces us to come to terms with reality in our life thank you yes harisham Oh, I was just going to say Tiffany uh, just raised her hand so let's see if she has a comment or a question. Yes please. Okay Tiffany? so mine was a comment. All right um initially the question was what we felt when we wrote something to that effect right so my perspective of it would more or less be when it comes to writing down the negative because I think I'm probably opposite to everybody else here I would quicker write down everything that I did that I believe that I did wrong throughout the day. so that way when the time comes i do it more i do it professionally that's probably because of the job that i'm doing or whatever it is but anyway all right so with that now i think that will more or less help me keep my day more what you are looking for i don't know good but it's not really the way but something to that effect all right and then negative leads to positive and then with me now i prefer to show gratitude for everything that i do throughout the day so i would more or less write that down as one of the things i did not do throughout the day so if i didn't show gratitude for like for every time a belly hit me i was like shocks then you know i would write it down and be like yes you know and then from some so on and so on i would just gradually develop myself to just being grateful for everything that happened and as me right there that's that's good thank you so for sharing that actually toward the end of the journal we'll talk about uh, a of uh, uh, the idea of a gratitude journal also but you mentioned that you know, this is a very gratitude is a very positive and powerful emotion and sometimes the events of life happen so fast and they are often so turbulent that even the good things that happen before they have registered within us something bad starts happening and then we forget about the good that has happened so if we make a conscious effort to be grateful then that can help us uh, that can help us quite a bit 
so yes and and sometimes it's difficult to be grateful for the bad things that happen but sometimes what i put is that you know, even if we can't gr- be grateful for everything in life we can uh, even if we can't be grateful for all the things that happen in our life we can be grateful in all the things that happen in our life i'm not grateful that this particular bad thing happened that i got this health issue or i had this uh, this job problem or whatever but in that situation also i can be grateful because there are other good things in my life so even if we can't be grateful for all situations we can be grateful in all situations thank you tiffany for sharing that we have a couple more comments here chitan sharma i just want to say thank you for this exercise because it was really wonderful because i got to reflect on the last 24 hours um and i actually do enjoy writing i've always wrote but over the past few years it's been hard to do so because i know when i pick up a pen and a paper it gets real and i haven't been really wanting to feel anything per se and i got to see the again that usually for me the ba- the the best part of things come from the worst of things so if i could just read what i wrote th- that would be great yes please okay thanks so um for me the best came from the worst i woke up feeling extremely anxious heart pounding out of my chest and racing thoughts and i immediately did the worst thing which was beat myself up for feeling like that i told myself i knew better and i'd done enough work and practiced enough spiritual tools to not feel this way again and then i immediately did the best thing i could do for myself which was reach out i called my manager and i told her i feel awful i'm anxious i'll come to work if you need me but i prefer to stay home and she totally understood and said stay home i texted my therapist and i told her how i was feeling as we've been working together for 5 years and she sometimes knows my pa- patterns better than i do i texted my friend denise because i just needed to talk i told my mother how i was feeling and the unthinkable happened instead of them telling me i was being crazy again they did their best to provide comfort denise offered to take me to a temple so i could pray she reminded me to meditate to talk to god and to just breathe my therapist spent an hour on the phone with me and broke down for me that grief and trauma never really leave the pain only lessens the only way to heal is to feel and that's something that i tend to avoid like the plague but look at how much progress i've made because i'm actually feeling and reaching out my manager texted me to check in on me and let me know that I wasn't weak for feeling the way that I did that it happens to everybody. She still deals with things from when she was 4 years old and I was going to be fine. And that was the best part of my day, knowing that doing the work and practicing spirituality doesn't mean it's ever over. It just means that I'll get better. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that. That's a lot to process and you know you have it's good that you have both the outer resources and the inner resilience to face this and good that you have friends that can help you both to get uh, help from a, from a therapy perspective from a spiritual perspective thank you for sharing that thank you Yeah. Chidan Sharan, is it okay if i make a comment on vinny's uh, vinny sharing and then there's a few more people who have their hands raised we have We have a little bit more time you can keep you can keep are we really holding you back on your presentation the rest of it or no, I think we can we can go ahead okay. I think here yeah. there's also yeah please go ahead Okay sounds good yeah there's a quite a few hands that have been that are raised um so But just before, before we go to the next share. people yeah I think yeah. Kenzie made a good comment also over here which went I think about they're really trying hard not to start crying um, Yeah Yeah I saw that Yeah the courage to acknowledge hey. and admit the darkness <laughs> You know, thank you for sharing that yeah, there is this uh, carl jung made a very striking comment he said that modern people uh, can't find god because they don't look low enough 
that's a novel you would think about looking for god high enough so what he meant by was that was that god can refer to the broad spiritual reality within us the spiritual so sometimes to find find god we need to look low enough look low enough means we really need to look at the darkest side within us and when we look at the darkest side as many of, as several of you said from the darkness comes the actually the darkness may be what pushes us toward the light may makes us make us what seek the light so yes so what harisham also mentioned about confronting the darkness and then that helps us to move toward light yes thank you yes harisham you wanted to make something about vinny's comment you wanted to say please. yeah so, uh, i wanted to share something about vinny's comment but also i just wanted to share that this is a really nice session by the way i think your exercise has sparked a lot of deep thought in people so i really appreciate the the exercise you've shared with us but vinny i wanted to share one one comment and reflection of what you just said but you know i the takes place amongst men versus women it's it's uh, i don't know the exact number but the number of men who commit suicide that is disproportionately higher they don't often their feelings and sort of what they're going through with their life in terms of struggle so i was appreciating how when you recognize that you felt some anxiety you just reached out you you called your believe your manager your therapist your mom your friend and then support started pouring in in different ways like you said you know everybody was they didn't say you were crazy or anything they were just checking in on you like how are you doing and, and how are you processing all of this and your therapist broke some things down for you so i think that's a really universal lesson that all of us can take from that you know in the journey of our life we are going to sometimes fall down to our knees but you know we don't want to remain there and and the best way to do it is reach out and have somebody just grab our hand for a second because the beauty of that is that we'll have to do that for somebody else someday you know so it almost becomes like this beautiful chain where sometimes somebody holds our hand and then sometimes we have to hold somebody else's hand but if we never know what it's like to have our hand held then we may never know how to extend that hand for somebody else you know so reaching out is actually a very powerful way to be able to reach especially because it reminded me of this statistic that you know the the reason why so many men commit suicide this side is because they don't always have an outlet so thank you for that comment Karen has a comment um Chitan Shampoo did you have anything you wanted to say in reflection about what I just shared or should we go to the next comment from Karen yeah it's a very striking point please go ahead thank you for sharing okay, that okay i think okay. i've gathered Karen, my ahead. thoughts and i'm pretty sure i've gathered my thoughts okay no guarantees but There's just been so many powerful reflections today, but one thing that um just this brought light to is how much I think, you know, the fact that spirituality is becoming mainstream and yet it's still always focusing on what's positive, like always like oh what's positive, what are you grateful for? And those are all great things, but I feel like we're just brushing like what is it like junk under the rug but it's still there you know like we're just like making it all pretty like like if you wanted to visualize it like i'm cleaning my house and i'm just pu- putting like doodoo like under the rug and it still smells like doodoo but it looks pretty or whatever yeah bedazzling our junk exactly so like we're just not dealing with the things and like and i think this um journaling is cool because yeah normally i write down what i'm grateful for um and it's all like nice and and you know positive and like high vibes but the fact that if we don't like deal with the yucky then we are not going to be able to raise ourselves as high as we could and the second thing that I kind of came to conclusion with is like on a physical level okay so here so thing like I I get microneedling done right and it's it's like ridiculous like the process of it basically it's like these tiny little needles and this esthetician like is shoving needles tiny little needles on your face and it's like getting it, it makes your face all bloody and during the process you're like ill like why would you do that like you're like damaging your your face but what it does is it sends like signals to your body to have like that natural healing mechanism kick in 
And it kind of made me feel like that's similar to the process of like dealing with our negativity, whether it's through journaling or meditating or whatever. It's kind of like, like bringing awareness to the damage or whatnot. And then it like kicks in our natural healing mechanism. I don't know. (laughs) That was it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, I would like to respond to your first point that sometimes spirituality is also too much about positive thinking without dealing with issues. It's true. It, you could consider like a, going to a doctor and the doctor, if the doctor gives us only pain medication without giving any curative medication, then, okay, the pain medication will help us feel better but it won't actually heal what is inside. What is the problem inside? So, so within spirituality also, sometimes when there is a too much of positive thinking without actually addressing the deeper issues, then it's just like having pain medication or painkillers at the psychological level. So, yes, that is, that is also imp- when a person is sick and is in pain, pain medication is important. But pain medication alone is not enough. So yes, spirituality has some things which make us feel good. And, and they're helpful. But along with that, there's also spirituality also is meant to provide us tools for facing ourselves and then for healing ourselves. So if it's only the first, then it's not that substantive. So both have to be there, both the pain medication and the curative medication something that helps us to feel good and then something that helps us to confront the dark within us so that we can become better. Thank you. We have uh, one more comment and this one is from Italy. Um, And before she goes, I just wanted to respond very briefly to Karen's very nice reflection on how, you know, this idea of like shoving the darkness underneath the bed as the process of cleaning. And uh, I was just going to add that, you know, perhaps this is where we have to draw the line between say positive psychology and, a genuine process of spirituality because real spirituality will always be ego effacing, you know, and, and the ego, the false ego is what contains all that darkness that Karen was referring to, whereas positive psychology can teach us how to turn negative thoughts into positive thoughts, but it may not alter the deep foundational sort of false sense of identification that we have with this world, you know, which is really what's producing all, and also just the ignorance of not knowing who we are. So just wanted to make that reflection also that, you know, this is where we have to distinguish positive psychology from, like real spirituality and ego effacement, which should be happening in the real spiritual process. Um, Italy, you have a comment or a question? Would you like to go ahead and uh, share it with the group? Um, Hello, my name is Italy. And I might seem a little distracted because I'm doing schoolwork and people are coming in and out of my dorm. But I wanted to say that my, what I'm going over is from what has happened within the past 24 hours the good and the best and I mean I saw other people doing it so I was like okay oh I guess I'm more encouraged to do so now um a good thing I would say it's not as deep and as personal as everyone else and I'm not ready I guess to publicly or to hear I'm really like really really uh, nervous to talk about more personal things but I can relate a lot on what Vin and Karen have been talking about and yes okay let me so a good thing today I did was or within the past 24 hours was walk back from a workout um working out is really hard and then when you're done it just feels so alleviating and it's just like wow and especially since the weather is kind of cold here in Texas now with the cold front it's just more you know walk out steamed and it's just like hmm, good good moment and the best thing I did today was take a nap and dream. I love to dream because it's just nice. Um, bad thing I do is recently within the past two weeks, I just keep sleeping late, like 1 a.m., 1.30 a.m. And it really messes with my schoolwork and my schedule, aside from work, too. And the worst thing I did today was not wake up on time for work. Um, I did not have classes today, and I had a 10 a.m., and I didn't even make my 10 a.m. I slept past my alarm which gave me low motivation to like kickstart my day. Um, Woke up on time for practice. Um, I play soccer for school. 
um, yeah. So that's my good, best, worst, bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to face what has happened and to share, articulate it. So yeah, I appreciate the candor in doing that. Thank you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, okay, so I'll just make two concluding points and then we can finish. See, journaling can give us spiritual insight. It can help us understand ourselves better, our inner world better. At the same time, journaling can gain from spiritual insight. Gain from spiritual insight means if you have already read something spiritual and that has helped us gain us some kind of spiritual framework. then journaling can help us to apply that spiritual framework so this is a this is a detailed subject but i will mention one example of what i am saying over here how journaling can give us spiritual insight and it can gain from spiritual insight so uh, we discuss often from the yoga text the bhagavad gita so one of the teachings of the bhagavad gita is that there is a lot happening inside us so this whole box you see is the self within the self is the soul the core of who we are and then there is a healthy part within us and there is an unhealthy part within us so the healthy part is called we can call it the intelligence you can be different names used for it the unhealthy part is called sometimes like the mind so <coughs> many of you mentioned that some bad thing happened and then there was a bad reaction from that side so how things work is see here there can be tempting provoking agitating angering any kind of situation comes in our lives mm-hmm. so now when that situation the provocation has come for us somebody might insult us so by temptation it can be anything it can be even the temptation to get angry so a provocation comes in our life now if the unhealthy part within us rea- is takes over our uh, our counter action then usually what we have is a reaction but if the healthy part within us is what responds then what we have is a uh, is a what we can call as a response so within us when the provocation comes who responds who is in charge is it the healthy part or the unhealthy part that determines whether our our response will be healthy or unhealthy so now when we react impulsively what happens is the unhealthy part takes complete control and the healthy part the intelligence is put far behind so we somebody does something to us and then we hit back at them and that ends up making things worse so now as i said i'm not going to go into the de- details of this but just a quick framework to explain this and if this happens repeatedly we might the unhealthy part might form a label for ourselves i am a short tempered person and then it becomes like a self fulfilling script every time somebody provokes me i become angry and then i react angrily but what journaling does is journaling is a time when as an introspection we go inside So what happens when you go in journaling is that we increase the distance between us and our unhealthy part. Okay, okay. There's this unhealthy part. There's the mind within me which is impulsive, and that's my mind speaking. You know, I want to, I want to beat this person. I want to yell at this person. Okay, who is saying this? This is not just I saying it. This is the unhealthy part within me just saying it. So what happens by this? once some distance is created then we don't have to act on it okay that's not there's a there's a part of which we part of me which feels like that but that's not the healthy part of me i don't have to act on it so what journaling does is it creates a inner distance between us and our unhealthy thoughts sometimes when we are feeling angry if instead of if we just repress the anger it will burn us but if we just express the anger it will burn the other person so what could we could do instead is just journal about what makes us so angry and just 
pour everything out what will happen by that is uh, at least we gave some vent to the anger within us that will calm us down and then maybe an hour later or maybe a day later revisit the whole thing what you wrote down then you will be able to see oh okay you know this part i am just generalizing too much over here this i am using too harsh words over here this is a important point this is a valid point i need to address this they need to explain why they did this so you will yourself be able to process it better so journaling what it what is inside it gives us a safe space outside to examine the contents of our mind and then by examining the contents of our mind after they have been put externally we can process them so in between repressing and expressing is processing so if you can learn to process then afterward we can decide okay this i can neglect it i no need to bother about it but this is a persistent issue it needs to be dealt with but we can express in a way that doesn't further uh, provoke or inflame or make things worse this is how journaling can help us identify and rectify the influence of the unhealthy part within us this is just one sample of how spiritual insight can help be helped by journaling and can help journaling so i'll conclude now so use journaling so there's two parts were about what to journal about and whom to address the journal to so but we could use you we could different people use their journaling for illumine your inner world and to inform your outer world illumine means understand what is happening inside and inform your outer world means make your outer outer choices healthier better so in this way journaling can become a tool for inner growth and for spiritual development if it can help us understand our inner world and then act with greater maturity in our outer world so i'll summarize what i spoke today we talked about journaling as the art of spiritual journaling i started by talking about often we think of writing as meant for publishing but writing can also be for introspection four kinds of target audiences for writing and then it discuss the dual use of dual aspects of writing is as art and craft so with respect to journaling we don't have to worry too much about the craft the grammar is focus on self expression for self awareness but when that i talked about words serve two purposes not just to express our thoughts but also to discover our thoughts we did the exercise of looking back at 24 hours in our life to look at the events that happened good and bad and the actions that we did good and bad and all of you shared some very good uh, thoughts and your realizations from that and then i talked about how spiritual insight how writing can give us spiritual insight and how writing can gain from spiritual insight and then i gave the example of how that can happen and overall journaling can help us to illumine our inner world and to inform our outer world so thank you very much for your attention and participation hey krishna